Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Babak Aloy. Uh, I'm a PhD student in uh, Eric Larsen Group at University of Gothenburg. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizer to give me this opportunity to talk here about my project. Today I will talk about uh, somatic structural alterations and their uh, influence on gene expression. Cancer is a disease of the genome. Point mutations, uh, chromosomal rearrangements, and uh, uh, copy number change, they all contribute to uh, activating oncogenes and inactivating tumor suppressors. Uh, st structural variations or chromosomal rearrangement, they can result in formation of oncogenic fusion genes. Uh, and there is also recent data suggesting that they can um, altered expression in some other way, such as uh, shuffling regulatory region around the transcription start site. Copy number changes and a structural variation, they uh, have typically been studied in isolation, but uh, in fact, they are tightly connected. A copy number change uh, arises as a consequence of a structural variation in the genome. Uh, as you all know, there are now several pan-cancer studies thoroughly exploring mutations and copy number, uh, in many of them using TCGA uh, data sets. You can easily explore them, for example, using uh, C-BioPortal, uh, as it is shown here for EGFR gene. However, when it comes to structural variations, uh, there is a, a few systematic studies uh, ex investigating these events uh, across multiple cancers. This has motivated us to comprehensively map structural variations uh, in cancer genome using TCGA whole genome sequencing data. Uh, we also wanted to uh, investigate the relationship between copy number change and structural variations, as the structural basis of uh, copy number is not well explored. Additionally, from central dogma of biology, we know that any uh, genomic alteration to be important in cancer, it should have um, an effect on RNA produced by the tumor. Uh, because of that, we wanted to systematically explore the global effect of a structural change on tumor transcriptomic. To do all of these things, we used uh, 600 cancer patients in 18 different cancer types uh, and uh, set up a pipeline to integrate uh, copy number data, uh, expression data with uh, structural variation determined from whole genome sequencing. Uh, as it turns out, uh, detecting structural variation was not without challenges. Uh, we did this using available tools, uh, but uh, on computational resources available in, our, available in our own lab. Apart from being massive computational efforts, it is also a challenge to get clean, clean, good results, and not all the available tools will provide that. Uh, the problem is that it's uh, difficult to know if the results are good or not. Uh, however, uh, by combining copy number data and structural variation data, we believe that we found a way to evaluate and uh, increase the performance of the results. By combining these two data types, uh, we could uh, investigate the structural basis of copy number alterations. As an important part of analysis, we uh, looked into the um, structural alterations in regulatory regions uh, and their effect on mRNA. And last, we also combined DNA and RNA data to get a better uh, fusion, uh, functional fusions for cancer. As I said earlier, 
uh, whole genome-based uh, structure variation de uh, detection was not so trivial, and we didn't like the fact that different tools were giving different results. Uh, so we needed, we needed a way to benchmark it, and uh, we didn't have the answer. So to find a way around this, uh, we used the array-based copy number data, and we know that the copy number change uh, is a result of uh, structural alteration in the genome. And because of that, we can learn about some of the structural breakpoints in the samples. Of course, this is not uh, perfect, but uh, still it provides a true positive set. Uh, and we know that a perfect structural variation detection tool should basically be able to identify all of these copy number breakpoints. So one of the things we did was um, to calculate a sensitivity score based on the overlap of uh, copy number breakpoints and structural variation breakpoints. Uh, after applying this method on four different tools, uh, we came to the conclusion that Meerkat uh, gives the highest sensitivity and works as the most uh, specific tool since uh, it had the lowest uh, correlation with randomized copy number breakpoints. We also could improve the performance by adding some post filters to our pipeline, such as removing the breakpoints in repeated regions. So we applied this pipeline on 600 whole genome sequencing samples and saw that around 35% of uh, array-based copy number breakpoints can be explained structurally. Uh, this number did vary between cancer types uh, and it appears that those cancer types that have uh, low scores uh, have uh, mostly arm level or chromosomal level um, copy number change. Out of those copy number segments that uh, had support from our structural variation data, uh, we had almost all the uh, deleted regions classified as deletion in whole genome sequencing, which increased the confidence in the result. Uh, we could, interestingly, we also saw that most of the uh, copy number amplifications are tandem duplications. For those of you who don't know what tandem duplication is, tandem duplication is a piece of DNA that is uh, duplicated and inserted adjacent to itself. Interestingly, when we uh, compare the two data types, we find that some simple copy number change uh, are in fact more complicated than they seem. Here in this example, we have two copy number deleted regions with a copy number neutral uh, region in the middle of it. But when we included the structural variation data, we saw that uh, there was only one tandem duplication in this region. We could explain this by um, it, an arm level deletion in one allele and the tandem duplication uh, in the other allele, which uh, neutralized the uh, amplitude for that region. Here is another example, but instead the deletion is the whole chromosome. Again, the tandem duplications neutralize the uh, amplitude of those regions. So for structural alterations to be important in cancer, they need to have an influence uh, on transcription in some way by altering uh, mRNA level or structure. What we did next was uh, to systematically investigate the influence of a structural change in regulatory regions near the transcription start site on mRNA. This is still work in progress and we are digging into the data at the moment, but to give you a couple of examples, uh, we found structural alteration in third promoter region in kidney chromophobe cancer, and these alterations were associated with uh, strong uh, transcriptional activity. 
This has been described before re uh, recently uh, in a paper in Onco Science Journal. Uh, another example is uh, FUBP1 in breast cancer. Uh, again, we saw strong association with, uh, uh, with the mRNA level in the sample with uh, a structural alteration in the promoter or regulatory region. Another way of affecting mRNA by a structural alterations is to swap the strong and uh, weak promoters uh, in context of gene fusions. We did a systematic screen for these cases uh, and uh, to, to see the effect on um, expression. We found that in many cases, these structural alterations uh, change the transcription activity. Here we used quantile quantile plots to show the observed uh, fold change value for the gene expression with the structural change relative to the other samples against expected fold change using randomly picked sample. The blue line and dot line uh, shows the median and 90% confidence interval for uh, the null distribution respectively. As you see here, for many cases, these structural changes alter the expression level. A well-known example of this would be red to CCDC6 uh, fusion in thyroid carcinoma. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been described before, but uh, we can see that this fusion happens by an inversion, and, CC, and, and red gene is uh, being activated by hijacking the strong promoter of CCDC6 gene. So uh, knowing about the structural basis of gene fusions uh, gave us a reason to, to look into the uh, uh, gene fusions using our structural variation data. So lately we've seen a lot of studies using uh, using RNA-seq to identify uh, gene fusions. We did this too. We applied a, a fusion catcher uh, on TCJ RNA-seq data. But looking at the data uh, from RNA-seq, we came to the conclusion that the data is so noisy and the specificity is so low. So we used the intersection of DNA and RNA to identify the cancer-relevant genes. Uh, gene fusions. Again, we needed a way to benchmark our approach. Uh, and for that, we used cancer gene sensor, 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 uh, cosmic cancer genes as a matrix to benchmark the results. Uh, using only the DNA data gave us 8% overlap with the known cancer genes. But when we used uh, in-frame fusions from RNA-seq, we had again the same specificity. However, when we used the intersection of these two data types, we had uh, much higher specificity with uh, uh, more cancer-relevant fusions. F uh, fusions. Using this approach, we could identify uh, several known fusions in different cancers, but also some novel uh, functional fusions. To give, you as an, to give you an example, we found PAX-A to NRF2 fusions in thyroid carcinoma. This happens by a tandem duplication. And uh, NRF2 uh, gene is being activated by uh, losing its keep one binding site in this fusion. Yeah, as it is shown here. So to summarize, we used uh, array-based copy number data is useful to optimize structural variation detection. Most copy number amplifications are due to tandem duplication. Shuffling regulatory regions such as promoters and enhancers impacts expression level globally 
and detection of fusions can be improved by combining whole genome sequencing and RNA-seq. And I would like to thank my lab members and colleagues. Yeah, thank you for listening. Hi, thanks, that was really good. So can you comment on the use of COSMIC to assess specificity because it seems like the hypothesis there is that you're more likely to get fusions in cancer genes, which uh, I guess I'm not sure why that would be. Uh, using only RNA-seq data, we will find a lot of different fusions, but we don't, a lot of them are happening uh, randomly or they are not functional in cancer. So we need a matrix to see if these fusions uh, the ones that are functional, most likely they are in the genes that are uh, relevant to cancer. So if we use that to, to get rid of the noise in the data. Okay, so specificity with respect to functional. Yes, functional. yes, exactly. Thank you.